Welcome back as we continue with a view. Uh, we talked to DA parliamentary leader Lindwe Mazibuko. Ms. Mazibuko has been leading the DA in parliament since 2011. She joins us today to talk about her achievements during this time, the DA's priorities for the second half of this year's session, but also about her assessment of parliament as it reaches its uh, half-term mark. Good morning, Ms. Mazibuko, and welcome to our program. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, before we talk to you about the DA, what is your assessment of uh, this parliament as we have just crossed the halfway uh, mark uh, term uh, for, this for this year? I, I did commit myself and my leadership team to making sure that we make parliament a more robust institution, that we discuss more of the issues that are facing South Africans on a daily basis, and that we use the parliamentary tools at our disposal effectively to hold the government accountable and then to present our alternative as a future government party. Uh, I think we've done very well in achieving that and I think that this has been a very robust year, first half of the year for Parliament. We are in the third uh, quarter of this year's sitting. What have your party set out uh, as top priorities for the remaining period of this session? Uh, this week is a very good example of the kind of work that we wanted to achieve in Parliament. We're having the debate on the National Development Plan today when President Zuma will be handed the document by the Minister from the National Planning Commission, Trevor Manuel. This is something we have been agitating for Parliament to be involved in and it's very symbolic and very important that the document is being handed over here today. In addition, we're having a debate tomorrow on the youth wage subsidy, a major issue of national importance. Again, it was, it was a, a, you know, a, a fierce debate within parliamentary programming about how this should take place but we in the DA did whatever we could to make sure it happened and we're very happy that Parliament has acceded to, to the idea that there should be more subjects of discussion on uh, South African issues uh, of national importance so this week represents a very successful period um, in our efforts to get more current relevant issues on the table for parliamentarians to debate but one of the things that has been a disappointment I think is the private members legislation where MPs are given the opportunity to write laws or propose laws and then a committee adjudicates on whether they should be passed on to the committees. You'll know that Mario Ambrosini is taking Parliament to court because a hundred or so pieces of legislation have been proposed since 94 and not a single one adopted because the committee continues to block this very crucial um, um, method of, of legislating on very, uh, you know, very uh, uh, groundless uh, grounds. So that's a very big disappointment. We tried to pass a law that would make it illegal for civil servants and uh, political office bearers to do business with the state. Um, and last week that, that uh, private member's bill was rejected. Um, and we think that's a really very big indictment of Parliament's uh, ability let, to do its job effectively. Let, let's talk a bit about the engagement of the opposition with the ruling party. Your relationship uh, with the ruling party mm -hmm. has not been a cozy one uh, with regard to oversight over the executive. Mm -hmm. Is there any improvement so far? It's not supposed to be cozy. It's supposed to be productive. It's supposed to be engaging. So, for example... Constructive, too. A absolutely. Uh, constructive in the sense that the outcomes are the best for the people of South Africa. That's why we have a multi-party parliament. But we're not supposed to be friends. And we're not supposed to agree. That's why we've been elected by different people in an election. Um, but the wonderful thing about this session of parliament is that we have shadow ministers in my shadow cabinet who've engaged very fruitfully with their principles in government, who have regular meetings, who engage regularly, and who try to solve problems that don't have political um, uh, implications, s solve citizens' challenges, um, very often behind the scenes in a way that isn't visible in the public eye, but which is productive and ensures that Parliament is a place where the opposition and the government are actually able to bring out fruitful outcomes. But in terms of parliamentary debate, it's supposed to be vibrant, it's supposed to be lively, and it's supposed to represent the ideologies, the views, and the principles that each political party campaigned on. I think that's a very healthy part of democracy, uh, and I think we should embrace it. But earlier this week, Parliament came under attack uh, at the People's Power, People's Parliament conference with Zaki Ahmad uh, uh, saying this parliament is dysfunctional and mm. the behavior of elected representatives leaves much to be desired. Mm. Do you share that sentiment? I do think on some occasions the behavior of MPs is beyond the pale. Particularly, for example, when MPs, and this predominantly happens in the ANC, when they pass personal comments about individual members. As you know, heckling is quite a normal thing in parliament and, and sometimes it can get heated. But we find increasingly that the ANC, in order simply to distract other members is raising points of order just to knock people off the of their of their stride and I think that's a very undemocratic way of conducting yourself in a well, parliament well, where everyone is supposed to be well able to the have chief a voice. whip of the ruling party is accusing is blaming the opposition parties 
for being unruly and disrespectful of the rules of of Parliament. Mm. Your response? I'm afraid Julia Killian has put him very clearly in the spotlight as the biggest perpetrator of that particular crime. Yesterday she raised a point of order in Parliament about why the Chief Whip is allowed to stand up without raising points of order or points of information simply whenever he feels like it to interrupt speakers in order to put them off or to simply make a mockery of Parliament. I would argue that Mr. Motsecha is actually one of the worst uh, um, offenders when it comes to this kind of disruption. And I think that the responsibility of the Chief Whip is to actually maintain that decorum and unfortunately he hasn't set a very good example for his caucus. Uh, in conclusion and briefly uh, what should we expect from the DOA uh, uh, during this remaining period of Parliament? Well you should expect more issues of national importance being fought for by the DA to be debated in Parliament. It's our job to legislate of course and to uh, conduct oversight over government departments but the floor of Parliament needs to become a place where people hear issues of national importance, things like jobs, health care, education being discussed and being debated uh, between political parties and solutions being sought. We in the DA are going to keep fighting to make sure that happens. Ms. Lindiwe Mazibuko is the leader of the Parliamentary leader of the Democratic Alliance in Parliament, thank you very much for coming through, ma'am. Thank you. And that's all we have time for today. And uh, until we meet again, goodbye.